this paper will be good for future bookmarks. I like that it's a little bit off white, it's eco friendly, very sturdy. Whoa, this one I like as well. I think this is an eco friendly one too. It's a bit thin for bookmarks. This one will be great for cards. I don't know if you can hear how it feels. It's like kind of watercolor quality on this one as well. This one's really nice and thick. Oh, I like this. If we ever get like fancy bookmarks, ooh, foiling, great quality. I love this, but I, I expect this to be quite expensive. So that would have to be like bookmarks that I sell. I cannot give these away for free. That's too expensive. Oh, they even have bronze, very fancy. Today is the 9th of January and I am almost done with everything. Like I'm doing the final things, the things that I just need to wait for, for certain companies to, <laughs> um, like I need to wait for the confirmation of my bank. Um, I have an appointment for a PO box that people can send their returns and any other things. I have that this week to like show that I'm me <laughs> to pay for it and everything. Boy has been writing my terms of use. It's kind of the not so super exciting things, but one thing I am going to do, I'm going to go out because there are a few things that I just forgot to buy. I need a scale to make sure that international packages aren't too heavy, to make sure that I pay the right kind of shipping. And I need just some maps that I haven't bought since I went to school just to keep all my receipts and forms in myself. So that's what I'm gonna do today. It's literally freezing. I think it's minus five or something. So I have my very comfy new jacket and I'm gonna put on a hat, mitten, scarf, everything. I'm going to go out. So, so excited because I just got a package for the restock. This is gonna be my favorite part, I think, of the restock because this is stationary and bookish things. And while the restock is going to exist of bookish things and stationary and secondhand classics, mostly is what I'm planning right now. Tomorrow I'm going to hunt for secondhand classics together with Boy. We're going all the way to Amsterdam. I'll take you along, of course. I don't want to tell you yet because I want to show you when I know the restock will be. I think it will be somewhere in February. It will be a little bit sooner than expected, but... Like a lot of people are so excited to support it during the launch that I don't want the shop to be empty. While I was thinking that March would be a restock moment, I think it's gonna be February. I think I will show you the thing that I am going to keep for my office and the other ones I'm going to sell. Um, and then in a later vlog, I will show you everything. There's someone at my door. Hey, we're back. <laughs> okay, I have it right here. Yes, permission to scream. <laughs> 
This is a bronze mug. <gasps> Look at her beauty. Ooh, there's a little bio about them as well. It has a quote that says, I love the silent hour of night, for blissful dreams may then arise, revealing to my charmed sight what may not bless my waking eyes. That sounds like Emily, right? There's a little information that says Charlotte, Emily and Anne were writers famous for Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights and The Tenant of Whitewell Hall respectively. The sisters first published a volume of poetry completely at their own expense and under the pseudonyms Gurr, Alice and Acton Bell. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm going to keep all the other things um, a surprise for when I actually do the launch but if you have a guess as to where the products are from or what kind of products you're going to get give me a comment down below but this is definitely a mug that you can purchase from my shop it's gorgeous it's so gorgeous I'm so so excited okay right now I'm going to film the clip for a future vlog where I show you everything all right <laughs> Um, welcome to Friday. I don't know what date it is. All I know is that my bookshop has been open for a whole week now and it's been incredibly overwhelming but in a good way I think. I've noticed that right now the orders are slowing down a bit. It's very two-sided because on one side I feel like panicky like oh my gosh like was this just a fling and what's happening now? And, uh, you know the the whole thing and and on the other side i'm like okay this means i can focus on some things that didn't go super well so i had some issues with international shipping sorted all of that out oh and i did go to two bookshops to get a restock and to the book in Zwolle, which i have now made friends with the lovely lovely new owner there uh, lotte who is really lovely and she kind of wanted to decrease her secondhand collection so i dm'd her asking her what about your classics collection can i come by can we like discuss something and she gave me a really good price for those books because they just don't really belong in her version of the store but they do very much belong in my store <laughs> so i'm really glad we were able to just have a lovely chat together and be able to like help each other out a bit and then i also went to amsterdam to the book exchange which is i think the biggest secondhand english bookstore in the netherlands and while i did get some stock from there i don't think i'll be going back there because i did kind of expect that maybe they were more expensive i could still over a good price but i will make very little profit on those books so that's not ideal it's very very critical on the books that i picked up from there and i did get some books that i'm really glad to offer to you or that i noticed were like doing well books that people want those are the things i've been doing and then right now i think there's some time to work on marketing it's such a dirty word but it's very important especially if you don't have a physical store like people don't walk by my store and think like oh that's browse no i have to persuade people to browse so a few things i'm doing is i'm sending books to fellow content creators which is actually really lovely to do so right now before it's friday and i'm sending out a few packages and i want to take this one with me and one of the content creators paula picked frankenstein by mary shelley this is a dutch translation such such a good pick because i also really love these editions which maybe it will be a future thing that i have new editions of these ones as well not in the near future i think it's a bit of a chore to fold these to be honest and i don't 100% have gotten the hang of it um, but one of the first, oh my gosh, one of the first things I do is I use this this stamp and I have a yellow stamp as well. You can't see it super well, but it really fits my logo, so I'm just going to stick to it. And I should get a bigger pad because I have to, like, stamp all over. Um, but while I do that, I thought we could chat about the books that I've been reading. So for a vlog, I was reading Fourth Wing, which is not a book I ever thought I would really read or let alone give five stars, but I did. <laughs> that vlog will come, I think, 
one or two weeks after this because it's not quite finished yet. Fourth wing, I wouldn't want to say it's like anything new fantasy wise. The author like read herself into a coma fantasy I feel like and picked all the best parts. All the best parts of the existing fantasies we have and she just put it into one book. And while I was at points, oh, this is a lot like Hunger Games, or this is a lot like Shadow and Bone, or a lot like Harry Potter. She just picked the best parts and all the things that were maybe not amazing about those books. And well, I don't really have any criticism on the writing in Harry Potter, but she just picked the best parts. And then also she added this explosive romance. She added smut. I am, I am in love with the male main character in this book. Like I would never be in love with him in real life. But like, oh my god, am I in love? So uh, I wanted to keep on reading for that vlog. I read the second book, Iron Flame. And then I had an emotional crisis that I don't think a book has ever given me in this way. Maybe after finishing Crooked Kingdom by Libra Dugo, I had a similar crisis, but it wasn't as bad as this. And I told Boy, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a bad partner right now, but I'm just, I'm so upset. And I've even been as horrible as when he says something not so nice. I'm like, Xayden would never, and Xayden is the male main character. So I'm completely obsessed. I read both books, which are like five to 600 pages in seven, days which is insanity for me but it has been a wonderful distraction of the stress and feelings of being a bit overwhelmed with the bookshop so yeah actually it was kind of perfect timing to read that but now that i finished that i'm still like in such a fantasy mood can you imagine reading two fantasy books and being in a big fantasy mode but i did decide to pick up one of the classics of my winter tbr before it's like not the winter anymore it's not seasonal read anymore and i really need to get used again to the more ambiguous literary writing but this book is about two friends who live in Norway. I don't really know what the time period is. It's a bit vague. Um, ooh, let's add a gift bag for Paula. Um, okay, let's random color. Ooh, this is... Wow, that was random, but this is pretty. I'm adding that because it's a gift, of course, for her. But if you want your books to be packed in this, you can add gift wrapping option i mean you can do it for yourself if you want to but it's kind of meant um for you to give your book will be wrapped in this pretty little thing with a little card that i'm going to paula's name on of course but yeah that is the book and it's basically like frozen but with friends <laughs> instead of sisters because the more shy character she entered this ice palace and the descriptions of the ice palace are really really beautiful but i'm only 50 pages in it's not a big book i think 150 pages but i really have to get used to changing my mindset not consuming the story because i want to know what happens but like consuming the writing which i feel like is kind of the difference with more popular fiction and classics and literary fiction so i, I really need to have a bit of a mindset change then i think i will enjoy it i'm going to print the label do everything and then hopefully it will stop raining at some point so i can deliver these packages i think i'll give you a little reading update when i have finished uh, my book It is Monday, so the start of a new week, and I finished in the weekend The Ice Palace by Tarje Vizaz, which I still am not entirely sure how I'm supposed to pronounce this name, but I'm doing the best I can. So this was written in Norwegian and translated to the English by Elisabeth Roken. This is strange. It's strange in the sense that I'm not really sure what to make of the writing. It's very matter-of-factly, and I'm not sure how much I really enjoyed it. While there are some beautiful sentences in here, definitely there are some beautiful metaphors as well especially for the winter and the snow and the nature i don't know how much i actually had fun reading this the story and the thriller part of the story i was surprised but i didn't really expect so i'm not gonna talk about it too much because i think that's fun for you to discover yourself very much very strong about friendship about sisterhood it has some queer undertones i think i'll just end up giving this three stars i know maybe it was me in a mood and me not really being in a mood to read this it didn't do a whole lot with me especially the writing just didn't really hook me. I have talked about this book in live shows a little bit and people said like oh my gosh I loved it so much so I feel a little bit bad for not loving it as much as I did but this just 
didn't do it for me, I think. Let's show you a couple of sentences that I did really like. The ice on the lake shone so brightly that it did not look like ice at all. Steel ice. Not a snowflake had fallen into the water when it froze. And not a snowflake had fallen into the water when it froze. And not a snowflake has fallen since. I do like that kind of fairy tale feel writing. Um, and another like more magical realism hint, I think, was this, which I really love. The men are lost in the game of the ice palace. They seem possessed, searching feverishly for something precious that has come to grief, yet involve themselves. They are tired, grave men, giving themselves over as sacrifices to an enchantment. Saying, it is here. They stand at the foot of the ice walls when tense faces, ready to break into a song of mourning before they close. Compelling palace. If one of them had been impetuous enough to begin, all of them would have joined in. So I do like the more psychic parts of this, yes. Difficult book to review, but I'm gonna give it three stars for now. And I'm going to continue with reading books for the Goodreads Prize, which will be a vlog that you can expect in a little bit. This week is gonna be a bit slower. Actually, wise I did get two orders over the weekend, so I will pack those in a little bit and ship them. Thank you so much to the lovely people who placed an order. Sometimes when I see an order and I see someone picking a book i'm like oh my gosh yes you have amazing taste <laughs> of course makes sense that i feel that way when it's a book that i selected for a bookshop <laughs> but i hope that you have a lovely lovely day i hope to see you in another video and i'm gonna go for now <laughs> doei